some of AI's challenges and rewards in the smart technology era. Just like with any challenge any one of us may face, the challenges of the smart technology era are not prescriptive for how things will turn out. They are important elements to note, to work to avoid, and to fully understand so that we may be prepared. Similarly, the rewards and potential benefits are not prescriptive either. Neither are theoretical dreams that cannot be actualized. When we look at the rewards that AI possesses, we are careful to not be too idealistic and remain realistic. We look at the rewards that are achievable and can be practically worked towards. We will also outline the practical frameworks to move to this rewarding state in later chapters. First, let us have an initial brief look at the potential challenges and rewards as contrasting states before exploring this in more detail in Chapter 8. The current transformation could lead to greater inequality and greater socio-economic exclusion. This could occur particularly in its potential to disrupt labor markets with automation, AI workers and role disappearance. As automation substitutes for labor across the entire economy, the net dislocation of workers by AI might increase the gap between returns to capital and returns to labor. On the flip side, it is also possible that the dislocation of workers by AI will in total result in an effective increase in satisfying and safe jobs. In this, the social, economic and information gaps may also increase due to a mere issue of access. Access to information and access to technology, the latter often means access to the former. Like the revolutions that preceded it, the smart technology era has the potential to elevate global income levels and improve the quality of life for populations around the planet. To date, those who have gained the most from it have been consumers able to afford and access the digital world. On the demand side, technology has made possible new products and services that increase the efficiency and pleasure of our personal lives. Buying a product, booking a flight, ordering a cab, making a payment, collaborating with colleagues, listening to music, watching a film, or playing a game, any of these can now be done remotely. In the future, technological innovation will also lead to the supply of so many competing products and services that will continue to continuously improve based on competition pressure, low cost of business, as seen with Uber and Airbnb, who do not own any of their assets, and the prompt access to consumers independent of where they are. As communication and transportation costs are going down, trading costs are being reduced, and global supply chains and logistics are becoming more effective we will likely see more new markets open and economic growth strengthened. But as we have seen from the previous transformations, transformation does not happen equally. The already included members of society are usually the ones to reap the rewards of transformation. While this transformation differs in that it has the potential to displace white-collar or socio-economically included members of society, it is still the blue-collar workers and unemployed who are most in danger. It is currently difficult to envisage which scenario is likely to materialize, and history indicates that the outcome is likely to be some combination of the two. However, with all access to knowledge and information, we are equipped to understand our history and to see where we went wrong. Yuval Harari, Richard Baldwin, Callum Chase, and many others have dedicated themselves to this understanding so that we may better understand how to tackle the transformation that has begun underneath us. It is also becoming more evident that talented people using their knowledge, expertise, and skills in creative and innovative fashion will likely be a more vital factor of production in the future than just pure capital. This could bring about an increasingly partitioned job market split into high-skill, high-pay and low-skill, low-pay segments, which brings about economic and social upheaval in the form of uncertain employment opportunities and an increase in social tension and discontentment. Others say that the entire economic system will and should be reimagined. In his book The Economic Singularity, Callum Chase discusses a forthcoming system that looks much different to our current one, where AI is changing and will continue to change the world so fast that the social, political and economic rules that shape our societies will no longer apply. They simply will not work in our future. 
Radical Markets by Eric Posner and Glenn Wall discuss one potential future which I elaborate more on in Chapter 10 along with other ideas while many others debate and write about what we will have to change in order to adapt and ensure the flourishing of earth and humanity. Without intentional steps towards how we are creating and using smart technologies and how we can destruct economies and society to fit into our new world, we are in danger of repeating the upheaval and deepened inequality left to us in our previous transformation. Whilst being a key economic concern, inequality represents one of the most intense social concerns of the smart technology era. The largest beneficiaries of innovation tend to be the providers of physical and intellectual capital, the innovators, shareholders and investors, which explains the growing gap in wealth between those dependent on capital versus labor. Technology is therefore one of the main reasons why incomes have become flat or even decreased in relative terms for most of the populations in high-income countries. The demand for highly skilled workers has increased, while the demand for workers with less education and lower skills has decreased. The middle class has also been weakened, with a further increase in socio-economic stratification due to labor-saving technologies, outsourcing jobs and demographic changes. This is also the reason why so many workers are discouraged and frightened that their own real incomes and those of their children will continue to stay flat or that their roles will disappear altogether. It also helps explain why middle classes around the world are increasingly experiencing a prevalent sense of unfairness and dissatisfaction. So, we have two intertwined situations to overcome. The first is the displacement that the technological transformation left us with and the second is the displacement that the AI transformation, the smart technology era, has the potential to befall on us. A winner-takes-all economy, as we are seeing with the quick upswing in tech giant capital and dominance that offers only restricted access to the middle class, is a recipe for democratic despondency and deterioration and a call to rethink social, economic and political systems. I will expand on this in later chapters. Our discontent and helplessness do not seem to be lessened by the pervasiveness of digital technologies, information sharing and online connection. With so many ways to be connected to friends, families, communities, brands, movements and strangers, social media and any other communication and collaboration applications do not actually result in feelings of emotional and mental connection. They are more often associated with feelings of increased isolation and anxiety. More than 30% of the global population now uses social media platforms to connect, learn and share information. In an ideal world, these interactions would provide an opportunity for cross-cultural understanding and cohesion. Beyond their impacts on our emotional and mental states, we should also be aware that social media can also create and propagate unrealistic expectations as to what constitutes success for an individual or a group, as well as offer opportunities for extreme ideas and ideologies to spread. However, being aware of the above and understanding our reality and the potential consequences it brings, we have the potential to ensure that we are taking every measure possible to avoid actualizing the things we fear. Firstly, it is possible that the dislocation of workers and certain roles will result in an increase of secure and fulfilling jobs. We will also see new kinds of work and roles arise for both skilled and unskilled workers. Access to a smartphone allows anyone from anywhere to get paid for labeling the data that the AI needs and interacting with applications to aid the machines in their learning. Furthermore, where robots may take on our historically dangerous kinds of factory or mining work, humans can support these robots from the sidelines and behind desks. This is not even to mention the historically expensive specialist services and healthcare treatments that through AI, automation and globalization will become more competitive and not reliant on physical structures not tied into high running costs and thus more affordable. The most certain way to ensure a future we would want to be part of is to create it. It is to take the steps and make the plans that use the tools of the smart technology era to include, protect and uplift all of society. If we fear a future where AI replaces us, let us create one instead where it supports us.
it is in our hands to insist that humans can and will work with technology, be supported and uplifted by technology, and where our humanity always reigns. The first step towards that future is to ensure that every human being on this planet has access to smartphones and the internet. This is more important than buildings and structures that we have focused our attention on in the past. A smartphone or similar device with a human-machine interface gives people access to jobs, education, knowledge, and social and cultural understanding. More than that, it gives people access to commerce. With AI, IoT, and drone technology, it gives people access to healthcare, medication, psychiatric help, professional advice, and services, and the list goes on, as we will explore further in the upcoming chapters. The aim is to make sense of AI and its impact on our world, no matter where we are in our journey with technology and smart technology, and to assist in improving the entire state of the world. Whether we need help accepting AI, automation and globalization, finding ways for people to reap its positive benefits and carefully manage any potential negative consequences, or seeking frameworks for governments and leaders to solve immediate problems, improve services and help its nations, communities and employees manage the changes that the smart technology era brings. We know, based on past revolutions, that without protecting and advancing people while simultaneously devoting ourselves to progress and transformation, we could be left with social disarray, economic devastation, political turmoil and general unrest. It is time we learn from history. It is time we take responsibility. Not just leaders, but every single one of us. We are scared, and we are right to be scared. But instead of rejecting what we fear, it is coming whether or not we accept it. Let us find ways to embrace it together and use the very tools that we fear to intentionally create the future worth having. Not just for some, for everyone. Each response and following strategy to the current transformation, with artificial intelligence at its core, relies on the responses around us. Public sectors, academia, private sectors. And not just within our immediate surroundings either. We live in a world of blurred lines. The decisions and inventions of a business in one country easily affect other countries and cross-border politics. This kind of globalization relies on all of us to work as a team. Our individual strategies for adopting and using the tools of AI may differ based on our current states, but as interconnected and globalized beings, our overarching strategy should be to ensure that we learn from our past responses to transformations and to use the tools of this transformation to have a positive impact on the world at large. With so much innovation made possible through the previous and current transformations, we seem to be constantly working towards what we call progress. And many of these innovations have made us believe that we are making progress at electric speeds. But with AI, 3D printing, self-driving cars, and all the things these have the potential to change for us, we are not actually making much progress. Or we are making progress for elite parts of society, while the rest of the world is relatively pushed further behind. This is not a criticism, rather a call to see things differently and realize the importance of working together and considering the impact and potential for the things we are developing. Real progress will be when we use the tools of the smart technology era to include and empower all citizens with the knowledge, access and new ways that our transformation has given us. It is up to every one of us to ensure that the tools of the smart technology era are used for good and that our world and all its inhabitants are taken care of. We need to think about smart technology such as AI in the context of it being part of and perhaps at the center of a revolution. It is easy to get glazed over when we hear the words fourth industrial revolution because of the severe lack of actual meaning. We do not know if it is meant to be scary or exciting. But we do know that it means big change. Some of the changes we are seeing already. Others are imminent and others are imagined. But with the velocity and scope of change, it is not long before the imagined is imminent and the imminent is now. We tend to rely on these changes happening outside of us and may feel a lack of control in how things turn out. But this could not be further from the truth. What we all need to know now is how to be a true part of it, how to assess its risks, make informed decisions, avoid disaster, and how to use it to include and transform the lives of all people.
The reason we must see it in the context of its predecessors is because there were some negative and positive effects to the disruptions left by industrial revolutions 1, 2, 3 and 4. We need to learn from these. We need to put on our intentional algorithm hats and see where we went wrong so that we can do better. Yes, we have so much information today that this revolution will happen more quickly and be far less predictable than its predecessors. But as humans, we have not changed all that much. We are stepping into an unknown future and we must see through all our biases and learn from our collective past if we are going to make the future better.